Hello, I'm Norman Walberger. We're at the University of New South Wales going through some linear algebra problem solutions. This is question number 66 in chapter 3 of the linear algebra notes, complex number chapter. So the problem is use the remainder theorem and the factor theorem to show that z minus 2 is a factor of the polynomial 30 minus 17z minus 3z squared plus 2z cubed. And then divide p by z minus 2 and find all linear factors of p. All right, so let's review what the remainder theorem says in this case. So the remainder theorem says that if we want to know what the remainder is when you divide a polynomial by z minus, say, a, then all what you have to do is evaluate p of a. All right. So the remainder when you divide p of z by the factor z minus 2 is just p of 2. That's by the remainder theorem. And what is p of 2? Well, p of 2 is, let's evaluate it, 30, replace z with 2, so minus 34, uh, minus 3 times 4 will be 12, and 2 times 8 will be 16. And what is that? That's 30 minus 34, that's minus 4, minus 12, plus 16 is a total of 0. So p of 2 is 0. So the remainder is 0. So we conclude that z minus 2 divides p of z. It is a factor. All right, for the second part, we want to actually divide p by z minus 2 and find all linear factors of p. So now we'll look at the polynomial p of z. 30 minus 17z minus 3z squared plus 2z cubed. And let's write it as z minus 2 times some unknown polynomial. The question is, what is that unknown polynomial? Looking at the top degree terms, there's 2z cubed on this side. To get 2z cubed on this side, we have to put a 2z squared here. Right, that'll give us 2z cubed. Then looking at the next highest term, minus 3z squared. How many z squareds are we going to get over here? So far there's minus 4z squareds from that product. We want altogether minus 3z squared. So we want to add a z, so we're going to add another z squared when we multiply this z times that z. So that's going to guarantee that this is minus 3z squared on both sides. And now the linear term. We need to have minus 17 z's. How many do we have on the right-hand side so far? Well, we have minus 2 z. That's the only linear expression in z so far. So we need to add another minus 15 of them. We, if we put a minus 15 there, then the minus 15 times the z will give us another minus 15 z for a total of minus 17. That's the end of the polynomial, and now we should check that for sure it actually divides by making sure that the constant term, which we haven't checked yet, the 30, actually agrees with the constant term here, and it does. So that's good. All right, now finally to write it as a product of linear factors, we need to factor this quadratic polynomial. And a surefire way of doing that is to use the quadratic formula to find the zeros of that quadratic polynomial, and then write a linear factor for each one of those. But it's simpler if we just stare at things and write down what the two factors are, with a bit of guesswork, perhaps. So we need a factor of 2z squared. So we'll put a 2z in that term and a z in that term. That'll guarantee we have 2z squared. And we have to find two numbers here 
that have the property that when you multiply them you get minus 15. And when you take the 2 times this number and you add 1 times this number, you get a total of 1, the coefficient of z. All right, so factors of minus 15, minus 3 and 5, or maybe minus 5 and 3, or maybe 1 and minus 15. So those are various possibilities, and we want this times this uh, plus this times this to equal a 1. So I think we want to have a, uh, a plus 3 here and a minus 5 here. That will guarantee that the 2z times 3 is 6z minus 5z really is plus z. And minus 5 times 3 is minus 15. So there we have a complete linear decomposition of the polynomial uh, P of Z. So those are the linear factors of P.